Innovation is a big part of RoboSub, and teams are always developing new approaches and designs to get a competitive edge. But it isn't just the pressure of the competition that drives innovation. Sometimes limits on resources like money and high-tech equipment force teams to innovate in order to compete on a budget. Because we don't have super unlimited resources, in the past we've cannibalized old robots and used their parts to build the new robot. This year we tried to get enough funding and enough resources so we can have two working robots and that worked out hugely in our favor because our new bot had a manufacturing malfunction. If we had taken apart the old bot, we wouldn't have a robot at all right now. We didn't have the budget to buy the T100 and T200 thrusters that everyone's using. We just used bilge pumps and built a shroud and painted them. So one thing we did have a lot of access to was 3D printers. So we 3D printed things from the brackets to the props and our sensor housings. Anything we could, we CAD and 3D printed. We try to buy components off the shelf when we can, like these boxes that we're using for the batteries. That We actually bought them at Walmart, and all we had to do was drill holes in them to pass wires through for the power. And that was really easy, and they're great and waterproof and quick to get into. Software is critical to an autonomy competition like RoboSub. While machine learning approaches are making some aspects of software design easier, they still require extensive data collection, which requires another resource that can be in short supply, time. Neural network training, we found that we need at least 2,000 photos of the part that we want to identify. So we found on the RoboSub forum an old model of this whole transdeck pool. We prepared models of all the stuff that is in those tasks. We tried to make it as realistic as possible watching videos so that when we come here and put our submarine in the water, we see similar conditions as in our environment. As new teams take on RoboSub for the first time, or members of established teams graduate and move on, experience can also be in short supply. This can be particularly problematic for younger and smaller teams. As a high school team, we obviously don't necessarily have the resources of a collegiate team, but one thing we do have is a community, both at home with Beaver, that's very supportive, and at the same time, we're also able to collaborate with a lot of people here. I started off in middle school. We originally were with the Sea Perch competition, but we moved on to the RoboSub competition, deciding that we wanted to do something autonomous. And when we started, we didn't have a lot of money to work with. We were usually buying Arduinos and small blackbone boards at the time. And we just stuck with going every year and working and improving on everything. And just sticking with that has brought me to have a really good relationship with Embry-Riddle. And so now I'm going to go to college there with them and also continue to keep working on all of the competitions. Established teams benefit from inheriting submarines and equipment from previous years. So fundraising, sponsorships, and donations are incredibly important for new teams. All of our members, it's their first time abroad. It's quite hard because not everyone had the funds or the money to come here. So we made a crowdfunding so we could be here and a lot of people helped to pay our trip. We didn't have a lot of experience dealing with local companies on how to get parts machined for us or take advantage of some of the processes they already had, so we thought it'd be too expensive to do it on our own. But talking to a lot of the other teams, we saw that a lot of them actually had a lot of sponsors that made parts for them. It's something that they're very willing to do and something we did not take advantage of that we want to in the future. Whether a team is big or small, in either personnel, budget or experience, the question is not if a RoboSub team will innovate, it's what will drive their innovation and what form it will eventually take. We love to see all the new approaches on display at RoboSub, from cutting edge equipment and designs to clever tricks and hacks.